as we mentioned earlier, one of the important thing when we study polynomial function is to find the zeros for polynomial function. In this video and the following video, we will study the long division and the synthetic division of polynomials that will help us serve that purpose. For example, for this quadratic function, if we want to find the zeros for it, we already learned that if we can rewrite it into product of two linear factors, then we can easily tell that the zeros are x equals to negative 1 and x equals to 5. What about this one? For this third degree polynomial function, although it's less obvious, but if we can also rewrite it into product of three linear factors, then we will be able to find the zeros to be 1 half, negative 2, and negative 5. So since the polynomial function is the product of factors, then if we know one or two factor, we should be able to use the reversed procedure division to find the remaining factors. And that's what long division and synthetic division is about. And I'm going to explain long division using examples. Example 1. For this third degree polynomial function that we saw on the previous screen, if we know that one of its factors is 2x minus 1, we need to find the remaining factors so that we can factorize it completely. As I mentioned, we're going to use long division, which means that we're going to find the remaining factors by dividing this function with its factor 2x minus 1. And we set it up in a very similar way as the long division you learned in basic arithmetics. This is our dividend, and this factor is our divisor. And the approach is very similar as well. The first term we want to write down, when multiplied by 2x minus 1, will get close to 2x to the third power. Therefore, the first term is x squared, because x squared multiplied by 2x minus 1 is 2x to the third power minus x squared. Then we do subtraction in long division. So we subtract these two terms, 2x to the third power and 2x to the third power cancel each other out. We get 14x squared. Then we write down the next term, which is plus 13x and do the similar thing. We want to write a term multiplied by 2x minus 1 will get close to 14x squared. In this case, it's a 7x because the 7x multiplied by 2x minus 1 is 14x squared minus 7x. Then when we do subtraction again, 14x squared get canceled out. We got 20x. We write down the next term, which is minus 10. Again, the last term here is 10 because 10 multiplied by 2x minus 1 is 20x minus 10. Therefore, when we do subtraction again, we got a remainder of 0, which indicates an exact division. Therefore, this is what we're looking for, the quotient. This indicates the original function equals to 2x minus 1 multiplied by a quadratic factor, x squared plus 7x plus 10. And this quadratic factor is not difficult to factorize, which is x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 5. Now, this original function has been completely factorized into product of three linear factors. Let's look at another example. For this fourth degree polynomial function, if one of its factors is 3x squared minus 1, we need to factorize this function completely. Similarly, we're going to use the long division. However, notice here, this given factor is not a linear factor. This is a quadratic factor. Therefore, when we set up this division, take a look at this divisor here. The divisor cannot be 3x squared minus 1. It needs to be 3x squared plus 0x minus 1. It is very important when you write the dividend and the divisor, your terms have to be in a strict descending power order. 
and you have to fill in any missing term with a coefficient of zero. So now we're ready to do the division. We want to write the first term that multiplied by 3x squared will get close to 3x to the fourth power. Therefore, that is x squared. x squared multiplied by the factor is 3x to the fourth power plus 0x to the third power minus x squared. Again, we do the subtraction. We got 6x to the third power minus 18x squared. Write down the next term, negative 2x. The next term multiplied by the factor will get close to 6x to the third power, and that will be 2x. 2x multiplied by the factor is 6x to the third power plus 0x squared minus 2x. Subtraction again. We got negative 18x squared plus 0x. Write down the next term, 6. And then negative 6 multiplied by the factor is negative 18x squared plus 0x plus 6. Subtraction again. Remainder of 0 indicating exact division. Therefore, x squared plus 2x minus 6 is our quotient, which means that the original function equals to 3x squared minus 1 multiplied by x squared plus 2x minus 6. However, our job is not done yet, because this function is not fully factorized. By completely factorizing this function, we need to find the function as product of linear factors only. However, here, as you can see, it is a product of two quadratic factors. Therefore, we need to continue to factor these two quadratic factors. For the quadratic factor 3x squared minus 1, it's relatively easy. We're going to follow this formula that a squared minus b squared equals to a minus b multiplied by a plus b. Therefore, 3x squared minus 1 equals to 3 multiplied by x squared minus 1 third, which equals to 3 times x minus square root of 3 over 3 and times x plus square root of 3 over 3. For this quadratic factor, it is not so obvious how to further factorize it. Therefore, we're going to use the quadratic formula. At this point, you either know this formula by heart or you know how to derive it as I showed you. Your choice. So in this case, let's substitute in a equals to 1, b equals to 2, and c equals to negative 6. And we get x equals to negative 1 plus or minus square root of 7. And if you recall, the four equivalent statements that I said is very important. If x equals to a is a 0 to the function, that indicates x minus a is a linear factor. Therefore, with these two zeros, the factors are x minus negative 1 plus square root of 7 and x minus negative 1 minus square root of 7. Therefore, the original function is now written in the form of a product of four linear factors, and it is now completely factorized.